everyone, it's Maddie. Welcome or welcome back to my channel. And today's video is something more scientific and probably hard to wrap your head around. Um, but I'm going to really put light on some of this because I think I might be able to explain this in an easier way for you to understand. And that is the role of antibodies and what they are, what they mean in terms of being a type 1 diabetic. So first of all, um, I took a microbiology class almost two years ago. It was a requirement for my dental hygiene program. And part of it was learning about how antibodies and antigens work and kind of how they form, what different kinds they are. We had to get really specific in learning all these different things. So I have a little bit of a background, um, which kind of helps me understand it. But my professor worked for the NIA, NIH um, for quite some time. And he likes talking about HIV and AIDS and all kinds of stuff. So like... We get to learn a lot about the whole realms of like autoimmunity and immunity in general. Um, so I'm going to delve right into talking about antibodies, define some things for you, explain some things for you, and then I'll show you my antibody results and what those mean in terms of being a type 1 diabetic. So first of all, type 1 diabetes, as you all know, in the most part uh, is an autoimmune disease. For those of you that do not have antibodies in your blood, and if you are a type 1 diabetic, that means that you had either you had your it means you had your pancreas removed um, because of an injury, another medical condition, or something of that sort. So you are still a type one diabetic, but you don't have the autoimmune disease type one diabetes. You have the less common my pancreas got removed because of a different circumstance, not because your own body destroyed it, but because you had to have it removed for another reason, and you're automatically a type one diabetic because obviously once you remove the whole pancreas. Uh, you actually can no longer make your own uh, enzymes to, for digestion, and in turn, you have to take enzyme uh, enzyme supplements to help you with your digestion. But anyways, the type of diabetes I'm talking about for type 1 is the most common one, the autoimmune version, uh, in which the beta cells are destroyed by autoantibodies. So what is an antibody? So an antibody is a protein in the blood that is produced to counteract an antigen. An antigen can be anything. Most of the time, in a healthy person, an antigen would be like a virus or a bacteria or some form of a microorganism, a protozoan, any of them, fungi. Uh, your body, in response to being infected with that foreign material or that foreign microbe, will produce antibodies to destroy that antigen. But sadly, if you're a type 1 diabetic, you have a combination of either some genetic factors um, or maybe being exposed to a virus or poor environmental uh, conditions in the past that triggered your body to make autoantibodies. Autoantibodies mean that these antibodies are self-destroying. Instead of them destroying things like viruses and bacteria, which are harmful, they in turn destroy the beta cells in your pancreas that make insulin. They see them as foreign these particular autoantibodies that are present in the bloodstream of type 1 diabetics like me, um, they see your beta cells as foreign and begin attacking them, attacking them until there are none left. And then at that point, you're going to get symptomatic um, and you're going to be without insulin production or very low levels to the point where you are dependent on insulin for life. And this is why type 1 diabetes is not your fault. We don't know why we make autoantibodies or why people do and other people don't have type 1 diabetes. We don't know exactly what causes them. Um, but we do know that it's not based upon diet or exercise or weight. So that is why it is it, nothing really you did caused it. Your body just did something totally goofy and mistaked your beta cells as a foreign object. And when your body thinks it's a foreign object, it's going to attack it. Now, we don't know how long it takes. Um, for me, it could have taken years, it could have been a couple weeks for them to destroy uh, most of my beta cells. We don't really know because I never was tested pre pri previously. Um, if I had a sibling with type 1 diabetes, my parents may have done the antibody tests yearly to see if they were starting to become present in my blood. Um, and then at that point, they could have tried prevention treatments to try to prevent type 1 diabetes from happening. But... Um, there's four different main autoantibody markers to beta cell autoimmunity. The first one is the islet cell autoantibodies, which are primarily just against the beta cells in general. They basically would just attack the pancreas as if it's some sort of foreign material. The other three are more commonly used today and are specifically against 
enzymes because the, the name ends in ASE. They're targeting enzymes which are then used in the process of making insulin um, because your body goes through a process to make insulin. There's pro-insulin, which is basically an equivalent to your C-peptide levels, in which I will talk about C-peptide levels in another video. Um, but using antibody tests and C-peptide tests are your two main markers to figure out if someone has type 1 diabetes, and my doctor used both of them, and they both point to type 1 diabetes, and I'll discuss that after. But the other three are, um, the first one is uh, called GAD65, uh, which is a uh, antibody against glutamic acid decarboxylase, which again is an enzyme that is used in the production of making insulin. And the um, third one is IAA, and the fourth one is IA2, and those are insulin autoantibodies, which are against the protein tyrosine phosphatase, which again is another enzyme that is used in the production and the um, and the make and the making of insulin inside your beta cells and inside your pancreas. What matters more in the diagnosis of a type one diabetic is the presence or absence of these. Um, if you don't have any autoantibodies uh, and you're a diabetic, it probably means you're a type two diabetic. Um, but then your doctor would probably want to test your C peptide levels, and if they're higher, you're definitely a type two. If you have at least one autoantibody present. Um, you're definitely type 1, but if you only have one present, you're most likely LADA or latent autoimmune disease of adults where you may not be insulin dependent from the get-go, but in the future you are probably going to be that way. Um, or you have a, a LADA, meaning you have a very slow progressing form of type 1 diabetes where it may take years and years and years for your body to fully finish destroying your pancreatic cells, which to me is kind of, I'm kind of glad like, I don't want to say I'm glad, but as being younger, um, I'm kind of thankful that um, I was pretty much, I was insulin dependent from the get-go, but there was one month that I was only taking long-acting insulin, but ever since July 22nd of last year, I've been insulin dependent um, 100% on one form of insulin or another. Um, to me, that's just like, that's like agony to sit and say, yeah, you have diabetes, but you know, it's going to take like 10 years for it to finally get all destroyed or whatever. So it, it, it's the amount of the different types you have determine if you have the slower form of diabetes of type 1 or if you don't. It's not the actual amount. So let's say your GAD level comes out to be 100. That's still positive. Even if, and, and also a GAD reading of 50 is still positive. But that doesn't mean that the person with a GAD of 100 has worse diabetes. It's just for whatever reason their body has more GAD present but they may have less of the other ones present. Um, it's, it's the amount of the different ones present. So I tested positive for three out of four of these antibodies and my C-peptide levels were low, which points to type one diabetes. Because if you're, if you're not making, if you're making auto anti, if you have auto antibodies in your bloodstream, in addition to having low C-peptide levels, that means it obviously indicates that your own body and your own an auto antibodies are destroying your own insulin production. And it doesn't matter what order these appear in. Um, who knows which ones appeared for me first, if I would have been tested way back when I was younger, or if it was just, you know, if I had it, really had it in my family, like if I had a sibling or a mom or a dad and I wanted to be tested for it. Um, who knows when these autoantibodies appeared in my blood? They could have appeared three weeks before I was diagnosed. They could have been in my blood 10 years before I was diagnosed, but maybe not at, uh, maybe at, they would be at negative levels. Um, to where they wouldn't have been concerned. And I'm going to show you what negative and positive look like on my results. Most of the time you need a level above 5 to be considered positive, And all mine were way above 5. Um, to be considered a positive marker for an antibody. There's also a fifth one but I'm not going to delve into this one. Because it's a more newer autoantibody that they've um, recently discovered and now test for. It's called the ZNT8. A, which is a zinc transporter uh, autoantibody. I don't know much about that one, but based upon what I've been reading, I'm assuming it has something to do with the way insulin is made and transported throughout your body through the element zinc. And um, some people may possess that antibody also, which also indicates and points to type 1 diabetes. So I'm going to kind of show you a little picture to kind of give you a better idea of what the antibodies look like in response to um, 
the beta cells. So in this case, the antigen is the beta cell. That is what is being attacked. And here's your, and here's your antibodies. They see this as foreign, they're gonna attack and kill it. I'm just gonna keep going. And you're not gonna know it's even happening until about 80% of them are destroyed and that's when you're gonna get symptomatic. You're gonna start peeing a lot, drinking a lot, losing weight, all the different crazy diabetes symptoms that most of you went through, that's when you're gonna start seeing these symptoms is when most of these are already destroyed. And that's really sad that you don't get symptomatic until most of them are already destroyed. And then you go through the honeymoon phase where most of them or the rest of them are getting destroyed. And then you come to the point where you're like me and you can take nine units in a meal and not go low. And you know that, yeah, you know, there's very little, ins very little to maybe no insulin production at all. So an antibody kind of looks like a Y shape. Um, and they, I believe they attach here. I don't remember though from microbiology class, but they look like a Y shape. Um, and in this case, they're called auto because they are self-destroying. In your pancreas, around here, you have the islet of Langerhans. And in that islet, there's beta cells. And when your body starts producing these, say this is GAD65, say this is IAA or IA2 or ICA or, or whatever, it'll start heading over to these islet cells because their job in their genotype or in their genetic coding for this antibody is to go destroy the antigen. And once they find that antigen and begin destroying, more and more get made, more and more get sent over there, they keep communicating with each other, and pretty soon, pretty soon, they're gonna get destroyed. And they're gonna get destroyed to the point where your insulin production is gonna go in the tank, and it's gonna be nothing. And you're gonna have very sad pancreas and a very sad you <laughs> um, and a very sick you maybe not so sad now but maybe at first when you were diagnosed you felt shocked or upset or whatever but you're gonna start feeling sicker and sicker and sicker until you finally feel or figure out what's going on these tests uh, have to be sent to a special lab usually and they're gonna do assays I'm not gonna go into what an auto or an antibody assay looks like but basically they dilute solutions until they can get something concentrated into a little bit and then they're able to measure it in whatever measurement they use once I pull up my results for you guys I'll be able to tell you what that measurement is I'm so I'm assuming it has something to do with micro units or micro liters or micron something because this, this is at such a small microscopic level that you'd have to take like a super high power microscope to even see an antibody um, you could see the beta cells probably more clearly under a microscope because cells are bigger than the antibodies and viruses and stuff um, in comparison to size wise. And when you're talking sizes of cells, that's really tiny. It's extremely tiny. The, the largest cell in the human body is a, is a human ova, a female egg. That is the largest cell in the body. Um, so you're talking microscopic stuff, you guys. You're talking proteins. You're talking little itty bitty means of itty bitty amino acids. You're talking little stuff. So like I said, they're going to send these to a special lab and they're going to do the assays and then they're going to figure out if you're positive or not. It's the same with your C peptide levels. They're going to take that out. They're going to basically reduce down to what they need, you know, if they have to do a certain test to get something to react or if they have to kind of like boil it down to what they're looking for and then at that point they can measure how much insulin you're actually making or they have to harness that amino acid and then count or measure with whatever tool they use to measure so now i'm gonna go into my um phone here and once i get this onto my phone um i will show you what my antibody results were so as you can see, there's uh, my antibody results for uh, particularly these three that I tested positive for. Uh, the only one I didn't test positive for was the islet cell one. However, when I did do some research on the islet cell one, that was the test that they used way, way back then. Um, and that was really the only antibody they knew about in relationship to type 1 diabetes. Um, but I hear that one's only present um, in early stage when your body is first becoming, uh, when your body's first making autoantibodies. So that one wasn't present in my blood. But the other three, the GAD65, IA2, and IAA were all highly present in my blood. GAD was level 40, uh, the level was 43.9 units per milliliter. And then you're going to micro units per milliliter for the other two. So as you can see here, the standard range for all of these is you have to be uh, five or less. Except for the bottom one, you have to be less than one. Um, 
and all of mine are way above five. My GAD was 43.9, my insulin AB was 15, and my um, islet cell AG512, which is the equivalent of the IA2, was highly positive. Um, they're all way above the level that they are should be at, um, which highly indicates type 1 diabetes, and then my C-peptide levels run the lower side. I, like I said, I'll talk about those um, in the future here, but uh, these were my results, and uh, I hope this shed some light on antibodies for you guys. And like I said, it doesn't matter if your if say if my GAD was a hundred and yours was twenty, that still means positive because you have to be above five in order for it to be positive. Same with if your islet cell AG five twelve was fifteen, mine's twenty six. It doesn't matter that yours is 11 less um, units per milliliter, it doesn't matter. It's still positive. What matters is the amount that's present because if I only had one of these present, it would indicate I probably have a very slow form of type 1 diabetes. And if none of these were present with a high C peptide, that would indicate type 2 diabetes. Because type 2 diabetics really don't produce autoantibodies. Their diabetes is induced by um, usually poor lifestyle, um, or just being insulin resistant where their body isn't destroying their own beta cells, but they just for whatever reason become ultra insulin resistant and their body doesn't um, recognize their own insulin. Whereas with ours, our insulin gets destroyed. So I hope this made sense and shed some light on antibodies and I hope I explained things in a pretty easy way. Um, and I wanted to do a video, a video like this for a long time and share kind of how this corresponds to type 1 diabetes. So, uh, for those of you that are newly diagnosed or don't know when we say or what if you didn't even realize what auto uh, being type 1 diabetes being an autoimmune disease that's what this means that basically means that you have uh, self-destroying immune cells these antibodies that have attacked your own insulin so it's an autoimmune disease um, same with anybody else who has another autoimmune disease other examples of autoimmune diseases are rheumatoid arthritis lupus or even celiac disease but they're not going to have these types of antibodies in their blood. There's going to be other ones that pinpoint to that specific disease or condition, if that makes sense. So if you were going to be tested for rheumatoid arthritis or celiac disease, they're going to pick out different antibodies. I don't know which ones they are because I don't have those conditions. But any of you that have other autoimmune conditions um, would know about those. And if you have one autoimmune condition, you're more prone to getting other ones. That's why they believe... Type 1 diabetes and celiac disease, and particularly in the younger children, are related heavily. That's why they do believe like type 1 diabetes and autoimmune diseases of the thyroid, like Hashimoto's disease, which is a super underactive thyroid where your thyroid hormone gets destroyed, uh, versus Graves' disease, which is a hyperactive thyroid where you your body uh, causes you to make way, way, way too much. They have other autoantibodies that are pinpointed to that. So anyways, I hope you enjoyed this video. If you did, give it a big thumbs up. Feel free to hit that subscribe button down below. I post videos every single week about diabetes plus more. And until next time for another video, take care, God bless, be kind, spread positivity, and be thankful. Bye.